Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. And I'm here during the second week of Advent, sharing another thought with you based on the story of Elizabeth and John. Let me read that again from Luke chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. In the days of Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order, order of Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to the commandments and the regulations of the Lord, but they had no children because Elizabeth was barren, and both were getting on in years. I'm sure that Zechariah and Elizabeth had spent a lot of time wondering, worrying, thinking about why she didn't have a child. I'm sure there were days when she was worried what that would mean for their future. You know, in our world today, if you get old uh, and you don't have family to take care of you, well, there are other alternatives. In Elizabeth and Zechariah's day, there were none. And people couldn't take care of someone other than their family because they were busy taking care of their own. And so we see that, that Elizabeth must have sat around gazing, thinking, pondering, worrying, wondering, now what's going to happen? Now what is God going to do? Well, there's a verse to share about that. <clears throat> it comes from Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34, and I'll just read a part of it. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. These are the words of Jesus. Big player in this story called Christmas. We'll talk some about that in another day, I guess. But seek first the kingdom of God. You know, putting God first is the most important thing. Zachariah and Elizabeth did that. It said they were blameless. Obviously, they had put God first in their lives for a long, long time. And to put God first means that wherever you are, whatever's happening, your first thought is about, okay, God, what are you going to do? Not what am I going to do? Not, why, God, aren't you doing something? Or some blame to someone. How did you let them do that? Why are they treating me this way? It's interesting in our political environment today. A lot of people blame a lot of people for everything. Even when they don't have anything to do with it. I guess maybe as human beings, we want to make it somebody else's fault when things don't work right. And I don't know how it is in your life right this minute. I hope it's a wonderful experience. You know, the time before Christmas should be joyful. I don't know if it is joyful for you. I know some people get really anxious about what they're gonna cook and all the goodies they're gonna make. Well, since I don't cook, but I help make goodies, I don't really worry about it that much. I just do what I'm told and scrape the pan or empty the pan or stir the pan and the rest, <laughs> it's out of my hands. But truthfully, all of life is like that. Almost all of it is out of my hands. Elizabeth and Zachariah's situation was out of their hands. There's nothing they could do. And evidently they had become content that they weren't going to have any children. 
Matthew tells us to put God first, and then all these things will be given to us. Well, what things? Well, all the things that we need. Maybe not all the things that we want, but overwhelmingly everything we need will be given to us. God loves us that much, just like he loved Elizabeth and Zechariah, just like he took care of them over the years. And then at the very latter stage of life, they finally get the experience of birth. In our situation, hopefully we won't wait until the latter stages of our lives to find God and to invite him to live with us. But even if you wait that long, the joy and the wonders are still terrific. So what I'd like for you to do today is think about, do you worry? Do you wonder in a negative way as to what's going to do and how's this going to happen? Do you put God first in your life, your mind, your language, your actions? You know, Jesus told us that we could take his yoke and, and, and he'll give us rest. Now, that means a lot of things. But one thing it means is that there's so much in life we don't have to be concerned about. If we let God rule in our lives. So as we come to, to this Advent period, I'd just like to ask you, have you let God rule in your life yet? In what ways today, not you know down the road, what, what ways right today, can you give something to God and then rest knowing he's going to take care of it? What would it mean in practical time, practical sense, if between now and Christmas Day, you adopted a pattern of putting God first and letting him take care of the problems. Well, I don't know, but you think about it. I'll be back tomorrow to finish out this second week of Advent with another story based on Elizabeth and Zachariah. If you have a concern or a need, something we can help you with, please let us know. We'll do everything we can as fast as we can to help meet your needs. God bless you. I'll talk to you tomorrow.